Hey guys, Dennis Films here with a tutorial on the Sony A6300 camera settings, specifically the camera settings that I use for my music videos. I've gotten a lot of requests in the past to make this video and I'm finally getting around to it. So I hope this helps. Uh, let's get started. For video, this is what we're doing. 95% uh, of the time I shoot 4K at 24 frames per second uh, for that cinematic look and the 4K on the A6300 is very crisp. Um, I love it. But um, anything other than 4K, I'll shoot 1080. This is for B-roll. Uh, I will not shoot 1080 unless it's B-roll. Uh, I find the 1080 on the A6300 to be soft and when you compare you know the crispness of the 4k to the 1080 is just there's no point um, for b-roll I'll shoot 60 frames per second um, and 120 frames per second depending on the lighting situation uh, during the day I'll shoot 120 frames per second because I'm able to get away with the 250th of a second shutter speed uh, in low light I shoot 60 frames per second just because, you know, if you bump that shutter speed way up, then you have to bump the ISO, and I like to keep the ISO as low as possible. Um, focus area, I keep it at wide, and the reason being is that I've never tried zone center, none of that. Uh, wide works for me. I've never had problems with it, uh, so I just keep it there, and majority of the time I do use autofocus, especially for uh, music videos. The only time I do not use autofocus, mainly for like this, tutorials, the object or subject is sitting still in frame, so not needed to use autofocus. Uh, dry speed, I keep normal for the autofocus. Uh, I've tried fast. Really, when you you know move from one subject to the other, or say I have my camera on the running, uh, when I move the running over just a little bit, it goes to focus on the uh, the foreground. I mean the background instead of my subject, and it moves too quickly back and forth. Uh, the shift from out of focus to in focus, it just seems more natural. Um, ISO, I will never go above uh, 4000. I honestly don't even like going to 4000. Uh, it's just, you know, starts introducing too much grain. Uh, keep your ISO as low as possible. Uh, if you're shooting indoors, just make sure you have enough lighting. Anytime I shoot in low light situations or know I'm gonna shoot in low light situations, I bring my uh, Studio Pro LED panels. They're a big help. I highly recommend them. Uh, metering mode, I keep it multi. Metering mode is very important when you shoot S-Log2. Um, I, I go by eye as well, but I also go by the metering right here. Uh, you always wanna, when you're shooting S-Log, you always wanna overexpose by two stops. Um, very important. When I was first learning S-Log, um, it took me a while to actually learn the importance of overexposing. But uh, anyways, I use multi. Uh, white balance, the only time I use auto white balance is indoors because you know the light doesn't change. Uh, when I'm not indoors and I'm outside shooting, I'll use daylight, you know, shade, cloudy, uh, depending on the situation. If I cannot get an accurate auto white balance, I mean, uh, accurate white balance from these I'll go to custom white balance and I'll find I'll customize the white balance to what I feel is correct um, when you're in S-Log 2 it's very hard to see the uh, how accurate the white balance is which I'm going to show you a setting uh, that will help you I use it for every shoot Get back okay picture profile I use PP8 which is s 2 I mean sorry PB7 um, hold on, give me one second which is s 2 uh, I use uh, all the default settings that with s 2 I do not change anything all that stays the same um, you know, it works for me. I don't, the black level, you know, knee, all that stuff, I don't mess with. Um, I get good results from just the uh, default, which is picture profile seven. You can set it for anything, um, you can do your own custom. For, let's see, 
This is important uh, to me. This is a problem I had when I was first shooting. This is actually, uh, I'd say about four months ago. I had a small face detect. I had it on. The problem with uh, small face detect is once it focuses and locks in on that uh, someone's face, and they turn their head and miss focuses and starts hunting for focus. Um, so I had to turn it off. I, it had me missing a lot of shot, important shots in uh, some scenes. So I'd keep that off. That's just my opinion. Um, I use it for photography on my uh, A7 uh, Mark II. But video, I keep off. Steady shot. Most of the time it's off. Um, like I said, this is the A6300. Um, it doesn't have the in-body stabilization like the A6500, which I probably plan on getting soon um, because my I normally use my Sigma 18 to 35 1.8 uh, lens, and it also does not have steady shot built in, um, which I'd like to have when I put it on a shoulder rig just to get a little bit more steady. Color space. RGB that should be default now. Let's see, move on. Zebra, I keep 100 plus. Uh, this keeps me from blowing out the highlights. Uh, I learned this through Who is Matt Johnson, which is a wedding videographer. Um, I, one of his tutorials showed me this, and it is absolute gem for filming to get the best quality, you know, not overexposing the highlights or underexposing the shadows. Uh, it really benefits you. I highly recommend that. Uh, market display is on. Market settings. I keep it at this. Um, it's best ratio because you know I add HD bars, black bars, whatever you want to call it in post. So it tells me how I should frame my subject. Didn't know about it till recently. Say a few weeks ago. Uh, it's benefited me a lot. Uh, when I shoot manual focus, for the peaking level, I'll shoot high. Um, this tells you what's in focus. It kind of gives you an outlier of what's in focus. And the peaking color, I have red. So let's say, let's go to, oops, wrong thing. Let's go to manual focus. What's in red is what's in focus when you shoot manual focus. That is what peaking uh, level is and you see the red that's of course what peaking color is um, very beneficial let's see uh, now this is really important no mm -mm. Uh, uh okay I'm gonna go straight to gamma assist because I'm gonna go back on this a gamma assist uh, gamma display assist I actually learned from YC Imaging, not on his tutorial, uh, on his camera settings. It's actually a while back. Uh, he mentioned something about it and I did a little research on it. Uh, this is important if you shoot S-Log 2. Um, right now I have it off, but I have it saved to a, my custom button one next to the shutter button. Uh, when you're shooting S-Log, it's really hard to judge uh, the white balance also the contrast in the uh, uh, frame so when I first starting off before I shoot and trying to get my white balance I go to S log 2 assist uh, this will give you the best judgment of white balance um, as well as how contrast the you know the, the frame is how you need to light it uh, let's see go to white balance it's on auto, so you see how it changes. You can see it accurately what the white balance should be. Now let me turn it off, and you can see the, the difference. Change it. You cannot really tell. You hardly see a change in the white balance, at least from my eye. I can't tell. Of course, you know when it goes really cold, you can tell the difference. Uh, it's such a dramatic change. But other than that. I recommend using Gamma Assist for your white balance. Let me turn that. It's okay. It's off. And one last thing <clears throat> that I don't see anybody tell anybody uh, on their tutorials is formatting. Formatting is super important uh, to me. I've had problems with cards not writing 
uh, my the data correctly and have had them have had them uh, show up corrupt so if that happens to you which is what I do is before every shoot I'll format my card right now I'm not gonna do it because I have footage on there that I need uh, what you do when you format it and you hit enter um, what it does it will show up a bar a loading bar and what that does it will erase everything off your SD card correctly pretty much the correct way um, like I said, do not do it if you have footage on there that you need. Um, like this, this is, it took about, I felt like I took 100 takes on just the intro to this video. But um, that's pretty much it. Hey guys, I hope this video helped. Uh, if it did, you know, let me know, give me feedback. Uh, I would really appreciate that. Um, also, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, you know, just comment below. Uh, I really hope this helped, so please don't forget to like, you know, share, subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Uh, I'll see you on the next tutorial. Bye.